Today on Mid-Missouri Art News, artist John Whitehawk and photographer Deborah Whitehawk. This is a man and wife team from Springfield, Missouri, who share their passion for art. <laughs> Welcome to JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News, supported by many art enthusiasts, coming in to you from the capital city of Missouri, uh, that's Jefferson City. Welcome, viewers. Please join me now, if you would turn uh, with me, to artist John and photographer, uh, that's John Whitehawk and Deborah Whitehawk of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, welcome to JCTV, Missouri Art News, Mr. and Mrs. Whitehawk. Um, I want to thank you for making the trip all the way from uh, Springfield, Missouri to Jefferson City to share your love of the arts. Uh, it's just a, a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks right. for having us. You're welcome. Well, let's get started, John and Deborah, if I may call you by your first name. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Please share with us um, and the viewers a little bit about John and Deborah Why Talk. Uh, uh, we're born and raised, what family and what have you. Let's go ahead and start with you, John, if you okay. would. Okay. <clears throat> I was born in Glendale, California, in the middle of the 20th century, and um, right, in the, right in the middle of the 20th century. I see. And had a, a upbringing where before California was really, really crowded. So I got to stumble around Southern California beaches and the mountains and the deserts and uh, uh, got to look at all the, the different things that that amazing state offers oh before it was packed with people. Oh and so I have a lot of really good memories of growing up at the beach in Newport Beach in California. And I can't afford to park there now, but I used to be able to live there. Oh my. <laughs> but yes, it's really grown. And uh, so it influenced my, my um, view of the world in lots and lots of different ways. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah. so you saw the transition uh, from a, a basic uh, standpoint of knowing what California was like before and, yeah. and now what it's like. So I remember seeing two gas stations on one corner uh, on a inter in an intersection. I was amazed. I thought, what are they thinking? Two gas stations on the same yes. intersection. And awesome. now it's common. But back then it was really unusual. There was still freight trains running through Newport Beach into Balboa. And uh, parts of Santa Ana, and Deborah remembers this too, maybe not some of this, but uh, there were dirt roads instead of uh, it going through bean fields. So, oh my. yeah, it's amazing. That back. is a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> yes. well, well, now let's turn to, uh, to Deborah Whitehawk, uh, uh, photographer, artist also, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, tell us a little bit about Deborah. Well, I was born in Southern California as well, not that far away from where John was, but I grew up in Salt Lake and Denver area. I see. And um, so those were really formative years for me. They made a big impression on me. Um, the mountains, the snow, it was a great place to be. And Denver was the same, the same way Southern California was at that time. You know, when I was growing up, it was, it was not near as crowded as it is now. Yes. Um, very different area, but the, the environment made a big impact on the way I saw life and my perceptions. And great, two great comparisons of uh, yesteryear. I have a few of my own, but I won't cover them. <laughs> but but that, that I can see where it might be um, in Deborah's photography and John's artwork. You can see a foundation, and you just don't pick that up from looking at the YouTube all the time or from a book, but uh, they have their own ability to create uh, with the camera or with the brush. Now, we have a man and wife team, and I've asked John and, and Deborah to give us an, uh, an insight of how this team works and how it came about, not to get into your personal life, but I know it has to be a working relationship uh, to complement not, not only your photography, and, and, but John's artwork. Can you 
what's your feelings if you both will give us this man and wife team and how it works? Ladies first. I guess the first thing is we like each other. We like being together. It makes it easier. <laughs> yes. But we we That's have <laughs> yeah, <I agree. laughs> we have the same vision with regards to art. We like a lot of different things, um, but it's it's what we do every day. Right. You know? So and we both have strengths and weak weaknesses. So um, we tend to fill in the gaps where the other one may not be as strong in that area. Or so you support each other, and uh, when we do. needed, do you jump in and help that other one out? Now, in your description, if we've covered it well, I know I feel, I've always felt that talking and meeting uh, Deborah first, she's an in-depth person, uh, and uh, that's, those are the people I really like to spend time with and, and kind of bounce off of if I can <laughs> once in a while. So uh, just great to hear that. I can... Uh, relate somewhat to that. And, and John, your first perspective, your view. Well, well Deborah and I made a connection right away when we first met because we have so much, it's a really amazing thing, so much of our backgrounds, <clears throat> even though we didn't know each other, well, we had the same kinds of childhood, we had the same views on life. She started reading when she was like six or five <laughs> or something, Tolstoy and those oh, kinds of things. So she's a really smart lady and, and she's very, very intuitive. And she's very, very artistic. And so when we got together, um, it was just natural. We, we love the same things. We, we look at the same, um, uh, the world the same way. Um, uh, she's, she's very, very uh, uh, sensitive in, in all different senses. She, she has amazing hearing. She hears things that I can't hear, not that I'm ancient and my ear, hear, hearing is going, but she's just got uh, thousands more taste buds than I have. She, has, uh, she sees things. We'll come back from a trip. And she'll show me photographs, and I'll wonder where we were because she's seen things that I didn't even notice. I see. And and it's just amazing what what she'll what she'll yeah. find that that she you know she's so perceptive, and uh, she's got an amazing brain. She she thinks globally, and so oh, when that. we're talking, or or she she can she can carry on a, a lucid conversation with me, and at the same time be writing emails to presidents and dictators and oh. you know she's just amazing as yes. far as that goes she's got yeah. a, a brain that just won't won't quit not to mention her artistic side yes. and she's very very good with a paint brush with drawing with you right. know with music she's also a musician and a singer and oh, uh, plays a piano reads and and you also uh, are a musician yep uh, in, in that respect and so like that in so, so yeah so we we connect on all these different levels spiritually as well so it's just a great relationship what a, a union a unified uh, yeah. uh, togetherness that's a great to, that's a great to hear and I, I'm, I know our viewers are going to eat that up like a piece of <laughs> cake. So that, that, that's great. Now, so Deborah, you are also an artist. I, you've shared some of those, uh, um, her artworks, photography, and I have a lot of Johns to share with you on the timeline. So we'll get into more of those um, uh, in the uh, second segment. But now we're just learning as much as we can uh, about John and uh, Deborah why talk. Well, uh, I guess I can see almost where you became inspired, but I, I want to ask both of you, uh, starting with Deborah, uh, what did inspire you at six years old or what have you? Artwork, what was your day of inspiration that you said, I want to be an artist or a photographer or at least put a dwell into this? Well, I think that like when we, we were talking earlier and I mentioned that I tend to go in a lot of different directions because I like a lot of different things. So when I was a child, I was very involved in music and in, in artwork and photography and drama and you know anything to do with the arts. I just yes. never could figure out which way I wanted to go. So um, I don't know if I made a conscious decision to become an artist. It just kind of happened. It just fell into place. It just maybe. fell it's into just place. Part of your, and, your and, being, I guess. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. this, you know, being with John, it's it just works so well. It just allows me the, to be yes. able to do that. And but with it, the, with understanding. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, we do we connect on on that level, which is so important. You know, but yes. um, I think my first photo I took at eight, that's the first one I recall taking, that I still remember what the right. picture that I took 
and then growing up in Colorado, being involved in nature, I was did ski, I was a ski instructor for a while. I took guided rides through Mount Rocky Mountain National Park, mm. and I just feel like photography. Um, it's quick for me because I, I do so many different things. I don't always have time to sit down and paint like I would like to, but I can take a photograph. And we do a lot of photographs on ways to John's shows and I'm hanging out the window and freezing him out with the window down trying to get photos at 80 miles an hour. So I take oh, a lot I like that. that. I really enjoy that because mm -hmm. you get that millisecond where something great might come out, you know. But right. you don't see it with your naked eye, but it's one of those moments in your life that you capture, that you were there, but you may not remember exactly what you saw. Exactly. So you have a photo that, right. that helps remind you. Well, now, John, turning to John, John is one of those artists that uh, phenomenal, you could say. I uh, compare him to uh, the Gary Lucy type artist through Missouri, and uh, also Billy O'Donnell, his plein air painting. But again, you'll see on the timeline the photo, fo uh, photographs or of the paintings, and you will be amazed. So I'm in awe when I view your your artwork, and I mean that from the heart. Uh, just not to just to be saying things. I'm a Missouri boy that just tells it like it is. I hope it's right. So tell us when you was first inspired and to develop this awesome way of uh, presenting art, uh, art works from your heart mm -hmm. and the fingertips. Thank you. That was very kind of you to say so, and I appreciate that. Um, well, I, I started out as a but the, the, my very first experience uh, in, as an artist, or I guess as an artist, I was five years old. And um, I was invited over to somebody's kitchen early in the morning, and um, they were mixing this lady. I don't remember who they were, but I re the only thing I really remember about that is the sun ki coming through the window. And I had uh, done a, a, a page of watercolors and then blotted the paper, folded it and blotted it over, and then opened it. And here was this amazingly colorful butterfly fly oh my. In, the, in the rays of the sun coming through the window. And it just, it was just so stunning. It just, that's what sealed my fate, that's, you know, wow. as far as the visual artists. Excellent, um, excellent. And, uh, and then it, it's just a question of, uh, I wanted to be an illustrator early on. And so I really, really studied hard to learn the craft of painting. And uh -huh. so the, first the craft of drawing and then the craft of painting. I see. And so, um, and that's where all my skill set came from, was that, I see. Was that, that uh, I spent two years as an in-house illustrator and then five years as a muralist in a studio uh -huh. and then went out on my own. But that whole time, I was, that was my, my beginning and my, my training. And then, of course, I, I've been learning ever since. And I haven't by any means perfected my craft, but I'm still working on it. Yes. But I've, I've come a long way. I've been painting professionally for 40 years, so I guess I've learned something along the way. Yes, and it does show in your work. It speaks for itself, and it speaks well for you also. Thank you. So excellent. I, I can identify with that, and just uh, uh, in all at, uh, some of your works and uh, Deborah's photography, uh, where you get lost in the in the depths of some of your photography and naturally in your artworks. Well, John and Deborah, we must take a break. So hang loose for a few seconds. When we come back, John and Deborah will um, share with us. Uh, a look at their impressive artworks, uh, some of their individual accomplishments and honors, and what, uh, what you as a viewer hopefully will get excited about in, uh, this coming um, year as we partake in the year 2020. Stay with us. I'm Rick Jason. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Mid-Missouri Art News. Uh, join me now as we continue our discussion with artist John Whitehawk and Deborah Whitehawk, the photographer, both of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, well, John, I'd like again to uh, ask you, please share with us the mediums that you use to complete your uh, artworks and what subject matter you seem to lean towards to portray. The, the world of art, especially the world of, of fine art, is really, really competitive. And so um, I, I come out of this, this kind of commercial art background, uh, and uh, I've painted everything under the sun. You name it, I've painted it. My. And so I don't have any limitations as far as the subject matter. I see. And so I just kind of go with my, my instinct as far as my, my desire to, cr to tell a story. I like to tell, usually like to tell some kind of a little story in my painting. Um, Although, like I said, with the competition, I, I continue to struggle trying to find some kind of niche to, to, to land in, some kind of a place to, to, maybe I should just paint windmills, or maybe I should just paint dolphins. You know what I mean? It's like a, right. there, there's this, this uh, struggle that I have as an artist, um, but, I, but I, I, st I still want to be able to express myself, so I don't want to get boxed in. Uh, so exactly. consequently, my, my subject matter and, is all over the place. I'm, an, I'm a realistic painter, and so that's never going to change because I, I really love realism. And, uh, but as far as my subject matter, uh, I, I just am all over the map, and I'm not sure that's a good idea considering the, ch the challenges. Of well, you know, I find that same thing. People tell me, and I'm interviewing a hundred and some people now on the uh, shows, uh, they uh, say, well, maybe Rick, you should, in your own artwork, find that niche. But I can't because that changes every day. And what I want to express in one uh, subject matter does not relate to the other. So why would I want to tie myself down or, like you say, box yourself in? So I can identify you uh, 100 with you on that 100%. And again, it shows in your artwork, I think the variety just endorses more and more what you're capable of. And we can see from your statement just now that where that originated, the basis and the foundation that you've, you've um, developed uh, to basically not land on one niche, but spread yourself out a little bit. I can't imagine doing the same thing over right. and over. And I want to thank you for that. <laughs> I really do, because uh, I do look at some people, they do get in the niche, and they do well, and we can identify with the waterways of Missouri or the the, the um, covered bridges of Missouri or whatever, the birds of Arkansas, Missouri, Mr. David, you know, south of us. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that. Well, now, if you would share with the viewers any recognitions over the years that you feel has validated you as an artist. I know at some point I shared with you earlier when I felt validated this last year. So what were there, do you have a need to be validated or did you come to the point where at some time you were validated. I, I have a need to be validated in a big way. <laughs> okay. and, and interestingly enough, I, I am validated by the group of my peers. I appreciate their criticism and their praise most of all. And I do enter shows, and I have won a lot of contests. I, I've won best of show in several areas. I've, uh, I think just recently I won a bronze medal in the uh, Oil Painters of America. Um, oh. Eastern Regional. I oh. won uh, many awards, uh, Oil Painters of America, um, of uh, Oil and Acrylic Painters of America. Uh, in Plain Air Magazine, I won five awards, including Best of Show in, in one issue. Oh. Um, but the person that means the most to me as far as who validates me the most is Deborah. Oh. If, if she comes in and criticizes a painting or says the nose is too big or the beak is too short or what it might be, it's like, oh, I just want to tear it up and start oh, over. You know? So it's more important for me to get her approval or her, that she appreciates and likes a painting more than anybody else on the planet. So, so. there's with that man and wife, you've got your critic and yeah. that help when you need it. To, yeah. So that that's great to hear again. Yeah. I just, uh, just it's just tremendous that you all can uh, work together like that. It's, it's a two-edged sword, though, you know. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. <laughs> we won't go there. Though. Okay. <laughs> His other stuff always turns out fantastic. Yes, I just, you're just so fortunate to be on the other side there. <laughs> can I, can I get, uh, can become a mouse, you know? Just, oh! <laughs> well, do you have any projects uh, 
our artwork down progress that uh, or upcoming events you'd like to uh, let us know about. Uh, Deborah's the, the oh, you're sure, so my stuff. with you, John. Um, I, I'm, I'm entering shows all the time. Oil Painters of America has got a new one coming up, a national, regional. We have three shows sure. that we'll be entering his paintings in, um, in addition to, well, maybe four now. It's hard to keep track. I bet. I think we have a lot of deadlines, and, and uh -huh. so we have at least three, and then Plain Air Magazine we try to enter regularly. And oh, excellent, excellent. Well, thanks again uh, for the in-depth look into uh, John Y. Talk and why and how and what have you. Well, Deborah, I'll next time to you now. Please share with us uh, what subject matter your photography entails. I guess your favorite, um, I think we could, it sounds like you have uh, no limitations. So uh, what do you really enjoy? If you really get the camera out, what are you looking for? That scenery, That's, those you know, animals, it, it, or it's just hard. It just depends on where we are and what I see, okay. because we we have so many experiences um, because we travel, because of doing shows for John and going to exhibitions and that type of thing, which is a great opportunity for me to take photos on the road or take photos of people. So I see something I like almost everywhere we go. Okay. It's really hard to pin it down, um, but I think that mostly for my work I I tend to go toward the black and white photos I have yes. some color stuff and it really depends on um, how it turns out Excellent. but I really yeah. like I like the look of black and white I like the vintage look um, I miss that I'm not real into Photoshop and oh, and all the, the um, originality you can say. Um, well we'll have these um, different pieces of uh, on the timeline as you're speaking about them. Uh, again, I, I love the black and white. Uh, I can identify with it, uh, uh, getting my first Pentax camera while I was living in Japan with an Army Security Agency. And my favorite shot is some basic um, seaweed and it grows out of uh, the Hakata Bay in, in Japan, black and white. It just speaks to you without anyone trying to doctor it up, I guess, uh, as far as colorization. So that's great. Now, I'm pretty sure with the viewers, any recognitions that over the years that you feel has validated you as a photographer? Well, I suppose, you know, this comes back to John and I working together. We, I will, you know, we bounce things off of each other. And so it's always really helpful to have his expert eye with my photographs. And if he sees a problem, he'll tell me. You sure. know, um, I've received a couple of um, first place photography awards, which are very nice. Um, I sell things, you know. Sure. So when someone buys what you make, it's it's validating. Oh, I, yes. You I, know, I, I've, I, I've been able to sell nice. photographs and artwork, painting, and um, so that's. That's a wonderful thing. I've, I've been accepted in some shows that are very nice. Mm -hmm. I've been in Kansas City, um, Kirkwood, Missouri, and John and I were both accepted into um, Lovett's Duets Gallery in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. So it is, a, it is a show about people working together to create artwork. Awesome. So my photography will be in there and John's um, right. painting now will be in there. Now the Sky Valley group, uh, are you familiar with the Sky Valley Group? Okay. I'm not. Uh, all right. Well, uh, the Fresh Gallery, I think you do represent. And are you the coordinator for the Fresh Gallery? I am coordinator okay. for Fresh Gallery in Springfield, in Springfield. Missouri. Mm -hmm. It's a collective gallery of about 25 artists. We all manage the gallery, and it's a fiscal agency of Springfield Regional Arts Council. Excellent. Um, so we, we have a new program called Friends of Fresh, where if you join the membership, you'll get 10% off of sales. We have um, events that are only open to Friends of Fresh members. In fact, one of the upcoming events in February, our inaugural event for this group, we just started this a couple of months ago, is uh, a house concert with yours truly here. Oh. And he will be playing guitar and entertaining us with his original music for a couple of hours. Super. So we're really excited about that. Excellent. And John is a musician also, so that's, uh, I may have to 
drop down and take some footage of that if I could get in the visitation. <laughs> we did bring you a couple of CDs. Oh, well, thank you so much. That'll be great to paint by. Oh, well, yeah. Oh. As long as there's a little bit fast here and there. So. <laughs> get those trees done quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Well, you shared uh, previously, uh, I, uh, I think uh, I shared with you previously, uh, I do have the um, invitation back to the Department of Natural Resources, uh, the uh, Brent's Nature Conservation Center show that's coming up in, in May of June of this year. And I would like to invite you back to both uh, to that, uh, to exhibit a, a piece or two. And so you wonderful. keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Love yes, we would love to participate. Oh, super. You'll be joining a possibility of about 107 other artists. Hopefully we get a, a good 80% uh, exhibiting uh, again this year since uh, 2018. It was uh, really outreaching and successful. So, well, thank you. I look forward to that also. Now, you do commission work. And uh, I imagine, can you give us some contact information? Uh, how to get a hold of your commission work? Commissions, big or small. I'll, I'll do size of buildings. <laughs> I'll do small portraiture. It doesn't matter what. And uh, yep, we do commissions. <laughs> and uh, uh, johnwhitockart.com is my website. And hey, all the information is there. I teach classes as well. So there's uh, all that stuff. And that's there. a must see on the website. So oh, thank you. I'll be, be tuning in for that. And Deborah? Uh, I don't do commissions, but I do help people build artist websites oh, with I see. one of uh, the premier art web hosting services. So I see. I, and that's, um, you can contact me if you're interested in my photography or learning how to build a website at DeborahWhitockArt.com. Excellent. Yeah. Well, John and Deborah, we're just about out of time. Time goes so fast. Um, uh, so I, on behalf of JCTV uh, Access, I want to thank you uh, again so much for contributing uh, to Mid-Missouri Art News, uh, making it a learning and uh, ex informational experience for us all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having us. You're welcome. Well, thank you uh, to our viewers for viewing worldwide, shall we say. Thanks to YouTube. And uh, our JCTV producer and crew, uh, Glory Enloe. Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching and, and assisting. Look for more Mid-Missouri Art News right here on JCTV Access. And don't forget YouTube. See you next time. Mm -hmm.